Hey, good morning and welcome to Blackberry Ridge. Um, went out into the garden yesterday um, and it's overflowing with stuff. Uh, um, and we are looking, it is the middle of September. So it is time for us to really start galloping hard to get the last of our produce um, canned up and uh, into jars or in the freezer or get it processed. So the first thing, so I'm kind of slumped over so y'all can see me. <laughs> so the first thing that, you know, it's like we have these beautiful green peppers uh, that were in the garden. So what I want to do is I want to get these chopped up and get them frozen. And real fast, let me just tell you, all you do is you cut them up, put them on a, um, a tray, um, like a baking tray or a cookie tray. And I put a piece of parchment paper on there, but that's not absolutely necessary if you have some parchment paper or wax paper. Or, um, anyway, put that down and then take your little pieces of the green pepper and put on that tray. Um, and let them kind of, I call them individually kind of freeze, the way they don't all, all stick together into a clump. After they freeze, take them and put them, um, sorry, take them and put them um, in a, a freezer bags, you know, like the, I don't know, the Ziploc freezer type bags, and um, they will keep a long time and then all you have to do when you want some green peppers to put in like some eggs or a soup or you know it doesn't work real good if you're putting them in a salad um, but anyway, if you're putting them in something that you're cooking then you just go and you just grab a handful or however many that you need and you've got garden fresh garden fresh quote unquote <laughs> quote unquote, a garden fresh green peppers. And we do the same thing with our onions. So that helps to extend the life of what we have in the storage space. Okay, so the other thing, these over here, the, oh, some of the other things that I have is that I have hundreds of tomatoes, hundreds of tomatoes in the garden, and a lot of them are green. Here's one that's kind of interesting. <laughs> Anyway, so we got hundreds of these tomatoes, beautiful green tomatoes um, out in the garden. And I think these were for my celebrities. Um, we grow several types of tomatoes just in case there happens to be something that, a blight or something that hits one type of tomato, then we still have others. Now what I did was that I picked some off of every bush, a little bit of green off of every bush. So that gave me some celebrity, some Atkinson, and some um, super Italian paste tomatoes. They were all green, and so that gives me a little bit of the flavor of each of these varieties because each variety has a little bit of a different flavor uh, to it. So, so anyway, so I had, I mean, I had a bunch of these green tomatoes that I had pulled off. So I was like, you know, there's only so many fried green tomatoes that I can eat, people. I love fried green tomatoes, but there's only so many that I can eat. And if I fry green tomatoes, Ombre won't come in the house for hours. <laughs> She stays over at her place. So, um, so I, I needed to do something with these. And the answer to that is chow chow. Chow chow used to be called, um, and a lot of the old timers here still call it that, used to be called a rummage slaw or a rummage type product. Where you'd go through the garden and you'd rummage what you had left at this time of year and you would process it up. Now something that I really love to do with chow chow is I'll open up a jar of those canned potatoes that we did the video on. But I'll open up a jar of those canned potatoes and I will drain off the fluid and I'll pan fry those potatoes. This is after I have made me a pot of pinto beans. Because when we have the wood stove going, we almost always have a pot of soup or beans or something like that on the stove at all times. You know, because it's, it's, it's hot. It's, the stove top is hot. So we'll take and we'll put those potatoes in the bowl and then we'll put the fried, uh, we'll put the, uh, the the pinto beans on top of that. And then we'll take a couple of uh, tablespoons of chow chow and put on top of that. Oh, talk about some good eating. Then make yourself some cornbread from fresh ground corn that you've made in your own cornmeal, which is what we do also. You're talking country heaven, people. Country heaven. So, so I went and I started chopping, 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 chopping. Now, I'm so sorry I did not take you all along for the ride when we started this. Because you, you all know how to chop a vegetable. So what I did was that I chopped up, and I also had cabbage. So 
I chopped up cabbage into about quarter inch, half inch pieces, kind of small. And some people use a processor, a food processor. If you got one, that's wonderful. Uh, my mamma used to take it. She would take a can, like a um, an evaporated milk can, and she'd cut the end out of it. Would be kind of rough, and she'd take it. She'd hit it with that, and she would beat. She'd cut it up with the end of that can, because she said that the uh, food processor just cut it up too much, uh, cut it too fine, and she and she she liked cutting it with that can. I don't use a can. I do use a knife with my cutting board, but you know, cut it up kind of small. And then I did the same. I, now, I took my, my tomatoes and my onions and my green peppers, and we're going to go through the recipe in just a heartbeat. And I used my Vidalia Chalk Wizard. And this thing is really, really easy to use. You just cut the product up into, you know, kind of a three by three inch pieces, something like that. Put it in here, open up the lid, give it a womp, and it cuts it up into, it cuts it up into the pieces the size that you want. I, I love this thing. Okay, so that's the Vidalia Chalk Wizard. Oh, we got so much information to talk about today. Okay, so I went ahead and then for every about 40 cups of product, 40 cups of your vegetables, you're going to use a half a cup of salt. Don't panic. What we're going to do is that you take and you, you put in your big tub and you put a, a layer of your vegetables in as you're cutting it and sprinkle it with some salt. And then put another layer in and sprinkle it with some salt. And what you're going to do is you're going to like pull off a lot of the moisture that's in these vegetables. And you're going to turn it, you're kind of like, um, at the same time you're kind of brining it. Uh, so, so I actually counted up what I had and, um, uh, and, then, and then went ahead and put the half a cup of salt on that. Now you let that sit. You know, kind of stir it all up, you know, several times, you know, and then you let that sit. And I just put put some uh, clear wrap over top of that or saran wrap over top of that. Um, and you let it sit for at least overnight, at least eight hours. Okay, and that's going to draw off. That salt's going to draw off all that moisture. Then you pour that salt off. Now, I actually pulled the salt off and I put it over in an area where my animals could drink a little bit of it. Because my animals love salt. I mean... We keep a salt block out for them. So I put that over in an area where they could kind of get a little drink of the salt water if they wanted to. But it's very salty. And it also has the nutrients um, that comes out of your vegetables. It gives them a little bit of a punch there. Um, and then I went and I rinsed it. Um, I, I poured off all the salt water. I put more water on top of it, fresh water. And I covered it all up with the fresh water. And then I went and I, I let that sit for an hour or two, drain that off. And I've done this like three or four times, draining off or rinsing salt water. Some people say you only need to do it twice, but I do it, you know, three or four times. And the last time I go and I put the fresh water on it and I let that sit for um, overnight. And it's just because I ran out of daylight yesterday, I ran out of time. So, that's, so what you need for this is you're going to need um, about four cups of green tomatoes chopped up and you're going to need um, a, a large head of cabbage um, let me get my recipe over here so y'all can see it um, ten, about 10 medium onions I used uh, five medium green peppers and my peppers as you can see are not medium my peppers are mambo uh, these, these are great big ones so I use probably four of these big mambo peppers um, and I, I ended up with 10 cups because I measured everything out. I got 10 cups of these green peppers is what I used. Um, and then it says seven sweet red peppers. Well, I don't put sweet red peppers in mine. And then half a can, I'm sorry, half a cup of cannon salt. And like I said, then you do that brining process there. Okay. Oh, also when you put the salt on it and you let it sit overnight, add a little bit of water to the top of it just so everything is kind of under and submerged under this liquid. Okay. Um, let that sit. And then, now what I've got here in this pot, in this pot right here, is I have five cups of vinegar and three cups of sugar. And uh, I have a, a teaspoon of powdered ginger and two teaspoons of turmeric. And, um, and then I have um, three teaspoons of dry mustard. Okay. In here. And I'm bringing this to a boil. 
Now, another thing that I want to show you all is that this recipe also calls for two teaspoons of mustard seeds and four teaspoons of celery seeds. And to do that, to do the, the mustard seed and the celery seed, you don't want that to be in there loose because then you'd have to skim it or try to get it all out. Nobody wants to bite into a mustard seed or something. So a lot of people use these little tea ball things here. And um, we use ours not only for tea, but we use it for spices. The thing is, though, is that um, there is no way that I could get six teaspoons <laughs> of product in this little ball, this little ball thing here. So I'm going to show you the old-timey way, the way that we that we always did it. My mamma did it, and a lot of the old-timers did it. Is I have a piece of the cloth here, just a piece of white cloth. It's about... Well, I guess about six inches square. It's the same cloth that I use when I'm wiping the lids down. About six inches square. And um, I'm going to get my um, my yellow mustard seed hole. And I got this from um, Berry Farm. And in a second, I want to read something really, I thought was something in, that was really pretty cool on that. Okay, now for the mustard seed, I'm going to put two teaspoons in the middle of this. Just like that. Okay, they're like little BBs. Can y'all see it all? Okay, there we go. Little BBs there. And then I got the celery seed, and I bought this at the Amish store, at Yoder's Amish store, which is in around Morristown area. Um, and it was $4.99 a pound, and you're going, Lord, that's the cost of a steak. Well, you can't buy steak for $4.99 a pound. But um, that's the cost of hamburger. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I bought this whole thing of celery seed for $1.95. $1.95. Sorry, the lid's really dirty, but $1.95 because I've been using out of this for a while. So this will go a long ways. So I'm going to take and I'm going to put six, I'm sorry, four teaspoons in the center of this. Okay. That oh, smells great. It smells great. Sorry, I sound like a kindergartner. Oh, I gotta get my string. Hang on tight. You know, anybody who makes videos, then you know that it, uh, you're, you're working around and you're trying to get everything out here so you don't have to run and get something and there's always something that's been forgotten. Okay, so this is just a piece of string. And so I'm gonna pull up these corners of this little bag and make like a little uh, like a sachet type thing so I've just pulled up the corners then I'm going to take the string tie it real tight around this now here's the beauty of this is that being the self-sustainable as we like to be this can be washed and reused okay so there's my little string now we're going to take this little sachet. I'm sure it's got a fancy cooking name to it that I don't know. We're going to take this sachet and I'm going to put it here in my pot. Okay. Now this has started to boil. So I need to let this boil for 10 minutes. I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes. Whew, there are disadvantages to being short because, oh my goodness, leaning over that hot pot. Okay. So before I put you on pause for a second, um, this this came, like I say, from Berry Farm, and they have this label on the back of it. it tells about, you know, how much calories and all this other stuff is in it. But um, it says, it had something interesting that was talking about mustard. It says, mustard seed is in the brassica family, like cabbage and broccoli. Yellow mustard seed has a sharp flavor without the pungency involved in oriental or brown mustard seeds. Mustard seed is used in pickling, sausage making, and in boiling vegetables such as cabbage. This is the mustard seed that yellow prepared mustard is made from. Dry mustard is used in egg and cheese dishes, salad dressings, and meats. Mustard is used in French, German, Scandinavian, and Irish cuisines. And you know, <laughs> I read Irish cuisine and I thought, we just call it food. <laughs> you know, we're, we're Scotch-Irish descent. So I thought that that was real interesting. They called it Irish cuisine. Woo! Okay. 
Okay. Then the other thing it says is mustard seed was first used in households after 1720 when a Mrs. Clements of Durham, England found a way to mill the seed to a fine flour. This became the method of processing the seed for use as a spice, both in cooking and in preparing mustards. Is that not cool? A woman. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to put you all on pause here for a second. We're going to get everything set up for the canning. And we are going to water bath can. I've already got over here. I got my jars in here. They have been washed. They have been uh, boiled. We're going to get our vegetables pulled over here. And I'm going to show you what they look like. My big old pot of vegetables that I have chopped up. And we'll be right back. Okay. First thing that we're going to do is that we need to, that little bag that we had made, we need to fish that out. So, fish that out and put it to the side. Okay. Woo! Smells really good. Okay. Now, don't look at my poor old lopsided, beat up, great big old stainless steel pan here. I had some, um, uh, I had some scraps um, from where I had been canning. Um, we're talking like the tomato peels and stuff like that. And so, this was last year when we had our hogs. And so, there was a friend that was over and I asked him if he would take this and give it to the hogs. Um, which was, you know down where the garden is now and when he came back he didn't have my pan and i said where'd you put the pan at and he said i gave it to the hogs <laughs> and so when i was able to get in there and get this away from the hogs the hogs had just beat this thing all up now it cleaned right up and it's still useful it just looks a little wompy <laughs> but you know just be careful whenever you give directions to somebody who doesn't live on a homestead <laughs> That you make sure that they totally understand what you're saying. Because he did what I told him to do. I said, take this take this big old bowl of scraps down and give it to the hogs. <laughs> okay, so what we've got here now is I have got in here my onions. And it's, been, it's just sitting in water right now. i got my onions and my celery. Not celery. My onions, my cabbage, my green tomatoes and my green peppers and this has been sitting in the brine water or that salt water for um, uh, at least eight hours and it's been rinsed several times and then it's been sitting in this fresh water for about eight hours um, so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this so i need to move everything a little closer Now this is heavy. Ugh. See, it's very wompy. I'm just going to take this. Here's my pot. A bowl of ingredients. Let's see if I can get this to where you can see it. Okay, you see it's got the vinegar and sugar and all the spices are in here. There goes my timer off, so we got that time just about perfect. Move it a little bit closer. I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to drain the water off. We don't want to water down our spice stuff too much. Now, after I put this all in, and I sit in, I stir it in a little bit, it needs to go and it needs to cook another 10 minutes. So I'm putting you on hold again because y'all don't need to see me strain this more than once. But we're just going to take all the water off of this. We're going to put it into the vinegar, sugar, spice pot. We're going to let it sit for 10 minutes and then we'll be right back. Okay, y'all, our chow chow has been simmering for 10 minutes. We have our hot jars in here, and we have um, our lids and rings back here getting hot. Now, um, the different um, single-use lid manufacturers state that you do not have to have um, your hot lids and your hot rings. Um, it's not necessary anymore, 
this is the way that I've always done it. And it just makes sense to me because of the way that things, when they get hot, they expand and contract. Um, when things are hot, they, you know, they tend to expand and they're just contracting. And, and it seems to me that if you have everything that's going on there hot, then it would have a chance to expand and contract equally. And I think that um, because of that, that gives, uh, uh, gives me or gives you a greater chance of having less failures in our jars. That's just my personal thing, though I am not a jarologist or uh, I am not a, a, a university um, learned home economics person. I'm just somebody who's been living in the country and been canning now for 40 years. So, you can just take it from that, okay? So, I always use hot product, hot jars, hot lids. Um, so, what I'm going to do is, this has been simmering. I'm going to get some lids off of here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the fire off with the chow chow. Sorry about the clanging. Okay, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the fire off with my lids and rings. Put them over here, and I've got on this countertop here, I've got some, a um, um, couple layers of uh, hand towels. Um, I have uh, my lid lifter, my jar lifter, that's one of these things. You're going to need one of these if you're going to be canning. Now, there are people who do lift their jars by using tongs and and that but um, these aren't very expensive and so I suggest that you go out and you get yourself a set um, and this is a, a lifter this is a debubbler and a measurer and uh, this is a, a lid lifter I'm gonna turn on some light see if that helps a little bit we're kind of in the dark it's in here a little bit okay so this is a water bath canner now you do not have to use one of these move this back so y'all can see it a little bit you do not have to use one of these big black water bath canners. They're not that expensive. But you do need to put something in the bottom to raise your jars up off of the bottom. So um, typically, you get one. What comes, what came in my water bath canner? And what, come in, what comes in the pressure canners is one of these uh, plates. They're, they're metal. they got holes in them. Um, and so you put the plate down. And you see it's got a, a thickness here of uh, about a half of an inch. And it raises, raises your jars up off of the bottom of the pot. If you don't have one of these, then you can take and put, you know, rings in the bottom or something like that. Oh, that's hot. Put rings in the bottom or something like that. But you do need to raise it up. You can use, you can use this kind of a pot. Anything that you can get your jar in, and you can get a couple of inches of water above the top of the jar. Any container that holds water, that you can raise raise the product up. Okay, so my my one like this holds ten of these jars. When you pour the water through, you pull it through the big hole, not through the handle side here, but through the, the opening here. So, we have a hot jar and hot lid. Now, one thing with vinegar is that uh, whenever you got something with vinegar, uh, it can break down as it's being processed. I don't want to use a spoon. So, this is our chow chow. You can see it's the golden color. It gets the golden coloring from the turmeric. And from the mustard powders. We're going to fill our jars to a half inch headspace. Now, another thing, if y'all don't eat pinto beans, I don't know why anybody wouldn't, but if you don't eat pinto beans, then um, this can be used for any type of a recipe that uses relish. So this, go, this works really good in eggs. Got too much in here. This works really good in relish, uh, in, in eggs, like you're making um, egg salad. Um, it works with um, uh, potato salad. On hot dogs and hamburgers, it's really good on a hot dog. 
So we've, what I've done now is I put the product in the jar, and this is this end of this is called the debubbler, and I just run this around here, and that gets any air bubbles out. Um, if you have jars where you got this big gap in there, um, that's from the air that was in your product still, and that's why I always use hot product. Huh? Cha cha on my arm. Okay. Now we're going to take a cloth that I've got vinegar on. If you don't have vinegar. Just use water, but you should have the vinegar because you just put it in your pot for your chow chow. Just run it around the ring really good. I'm going to, this is another part of the set that comes. It's got a little magnet on the end. And I'm going to pick up a hot lid. <clears throat> and this is called a ring, hot ring. Finger tight down. <clears throat> And then you take your jar lifter, and I'll put it back in the canner. And I'm going to continue to do this until I get all of these, all ten of these jars filled. Now, I had somebody ask me a question. Why do I always put my jars in a bowl? And that's for two reasons. First of all, I don't want to put my jars on my counter. Um, this is not an expensive counter. But I want to keep it as nice as I can, as long as I can. So I'm protecting my counter that way, my countertop. But the other thing is that um, uh, if I spill, and I'm notorious for feeding the floor, or feeding the countertop, or feeding the stove. <laughs> I'm notorious at that. So... <clears throat> I put that down so if I spill anything like I've got in here now, that helps to contain my mess. I'm doing a good job of overfilling today. Anyway, so we want it to be about a half inch head space. And let me debubble that again. And debubble, this means that you're just taking it and you're just taking this down and you're just kind of giving it a little shove um, towards the center. And then I take and put it in the center and kind of shove it out, out both ways. And that helps to get the, get the uh, air out that might be trapped in there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to process these jars. Now, hopefully, my camera will let me be able to come back and show you after these get processed. Now, we're going to water bath can them um, for, I need another hand towel here. We're going to water bath can them for 10 minutes, which means that once I put them in the canner, I'm going to bring it back up to a boil, and my time doesn't start until it starts boiling, okay? Not from the time that it, it sits, you know, touches the canner, but from the time that it starts boiling again. Make sure that when you do this, though, that you have at least one to two inches of water over top of the jar. Okay. So, if, if for some reason, because this happens all the time, I get cut off, I don't know why, but if we shouldn't, I just want you all to know, God bless America, pray for our country. Y'all are talking to Vivian Ann on the side of the mountain in northeast Tennessee. Happy canning. Don't let those green tomatoes go to waste. Tell somebody about us. And if there's any kind of videos that you all would like to see, like in Canon or anything like that, then let me know. And if I'm doing it, I'll show you how. Hey, yay! It didn't go crazy. So, I get to show you this. Yay! Okay, so, in this pan right here, we have our, we have ten jars in here. In this one, I've got six jars. Um, I've just got them in here staying hot. And I'm going to transfer them over to here, uh, into this big water bath canner after um, I get these out. But let me show you what we do. <clears throat> okay. Take the lid off. I'm going to turn the fire off. Okay. Okay. 
get my hot pad here. Now when I raise these up, I got the lid secured on them. And then I hold them by the hot pad. And on this counter over here, I have a towel, double thickness. And I'm going to put them over here on this. Okay, we're going to let these sit for 24 hours. And then I will remove the rings. And I will uh, write on the lid, chow chow. And I will put uh, September, say 16th, baby girl. Yes. I'll put September the 16th on it. Oh, listen to that. One I'm already popped. September the 16th. And we will have 16 pints of chow chow, which will carry us through the year. Um, I did use single use lids on these, not the Tatler lids. Just because um, if I somebody comes in and they want me to give one of these away as a gift to them, um, I will I will have the uh, the availability to do that for them. All right, so here we go again. Just take taking the jars out, getting ready to put the second batch in. Up, oh, ping! Isn't that the sound of happiness? Okay, God bless America. Pray for our country. Oh, just let y'all know. If y'all have been hearing this little twittery sound over here, we just got us some baby chickens. And I will put a video out on that. God bless America. Happy Cannon. Vivian Ann on the side of the mountain in northeast Tennessee.